100,000 people will die today from drinking unsafe water. A very large percent are children under five years old. In about six weeks, more people die from unsafe drinking water than all U.S. troops killed in all wars. In 2006, 2.9 million people died from AIDS. 3.5 million people died from unsafe drinking water. Unsafe drinking water killed over 600,000 more people than AIDS. 15 of the 20 largest cities in the world lack safe drinking water. Over 131 million people out of the 175 million people lack safe drinking water in the world's largest cities. This represents over 75% of the population. Worldwide, there are many water problems. As you can see from this picture in Asia, people living on the river. They live on the river, cook on the river, bathe in the river, wash their clothes in the river. There's much pollution in this water. There's also industrial runoff from manufacturing plants. As you can see, the children there uh, really don't have much to do. A lot of them play in the water. Uh, it's a very unsanitary condition. People drinking this water can become, and very, do become, very ill or even die. Uh, you get into other countries, there are other problems such as Africa where they have lack of water. Central and South America, there are a lot of people drinking water similar to this. The solution to many of the world's water problems can be accomplished by the use of a water enterprise. A water enterprise is like a mini localized water bottling plant that will service areas of 5,000 people or more. It works very well by cutting the cost of bottled water. It does it by several different ways. One is on-site purification. The other is reuse of the bottles. So this is where a customer could bring a bottle in, fill it up with water, and take it home. So there would be no transportation costs and no container costs. It costs about one cent to produce a gallon of water. Some of the water enterprises also will do water delivery into poor areas or outlying areas. The Global Water Group was set up as a non-profit organization to provide safe drinking water to poor people in developed countries. We work with NGOs, churches, groups such as Rotary to set up proven business models. 100% of all donations that Global Water Group received goes towards the purchase of equipment provide water in these countries. Over 50% of the hospital beds worldwide have somebody in there with waterborne disease. Close to 10,000 people a day will die directly related to drinking water. And there's a huge demand for water just because in a lot of places they just don't have safe drinking water. With this system, which is reverse osmosis, you've actually got four different systems. It starts off here where you're pulling water into the supply system. You get over to the first part on this side, it's pre-filtration. The pre-filtration is to protect the membranes. Membranes are a very, very fine filters, all they are. It sounds very high tech, but that's the basis of it. So we go into a 20 micron, which is about the equivalent to what a swimming pool filter is. Then we go into a carbon filter, Carbon filter will also take out chlorine taste, odors, uh, a lot of things you would not want to be drinking. Then we go into a five micron uh, filter, which is to protect the membranes again, because it can pass through the membrane. After the water leaves the five micron filter, it goes to a high pressure pump. 
The high pressure pump boosts the water pressure up to approximately 175 pounds per square inch and pushes it through the membranes. Now, to give you an idea, we're talking a little bit about microns and so forth. A human hair diameter is usually about 20 microns. A reverse osmosis membrane is 0 0.0002 to 3 microns, which basically eliminates about 99% of all contaminants in the water. By the time you get done, you have a very high quality water. That's the same system, the type of system they would use for dialysis. So there's many benefits to reverse osmosis. After it leaves the reverse osmosis membranes, the water then goes into the water storage tanks. The reverse osmosis membranes will produce about a gallon per minute per membrane. So what you're doing is you're purifying the water and storing it in the storage tanks. So you've got, gone through the supply part of the system, pre-filtration, purification. Now you've got that water sitting in the tanks and you need to deliver it. From there, the water comes back into a pressure pump that works with a pressure tank. And the reason why we have a pressure tank is because if you didn't have the pressure tank, your pump would be cycling on and off all the time. So then it goes through another final uh, carbon filtration. A lot of people will call that a polishing filter. It gives you your final taste and odor and then it goes through an ultraviolet light. An ultraviolet light will kill 99.9 percent .9 of all bacteria, algae, anything biological. So that way you know you are getting a very safe product. This is the filling bottle rinsing area. Uh, there's one thing that's very important and a lot of people don't realize about bottled water is your container. A lot of people will put good water in a dirty contaminated container. So it's very important to wash or rinse out your bottles. The easiest way to do it is with a bottle rinser such as we have here. We turn the valve on and we give it a blast of water. It'll go on for about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. The blast of water is also sucking in ozone gas. Ozone is 3,000 times more powerful than chlorine as a disinfectant. So by the time the you're taking the bottle off of here. You turn the water off, you take the bottle off. That bottle also has a bunch of ozone gas in there right now. It's still killing. The thing is, you come over here, you put the water in the bottle, and the ozone gas goes out. So therefore, you're sanitizing the container, you're keeping it sanitized, and so you have a safe water versus water that's been put in a dirty bottle. I've seen people put water in bottles that are actually green.